my name is Jihei, and I'm a recovering professional golfer. As you can tell from these quotes, golf is an infuriatingly difficult sport, and truly one of the hardest skills to learn. And I was crazy enough to try to make a living playing it. Thankfully for me, I started very young, when I was eight years old living in Seoul, South Korea. Summer of 1991, my parents saw me swing a plastic bat for the first time. I must have looked like Barry Bonds because the following week, they took me to a driving range, set me up with a coach and a set of clubs and said, come here and practice for three hours every day after school. How do you get here? You'll figure it out. There's so many buses and subways. We're not worried. Again, I had just turned eight and this was Seoul, a city of 15 million people connected by a dizzying array of buses and subways. But I was never one to back down from a challenge, so figure it out I did, by trial and error, because Google Maps wasn't available back then. Most of the time, I picked the right bus and safely arrived at my destination. But from time to time, I would take the wrong bus and end up across the river and in parts of the city where I'd never been. But I would learn. And I worked on my golf game in a similar way. Sure, when my coach was there, I was given some instruction as to what to do, what not to do with my swing, but there was little to no technology involved in the instruction. Not even video was available back then to provide visual feedback. I was purely dependent on the coach's naked eye. Plus in golf, you're on your own 99% of the time. It's not like the coach can be on the golf course with you hitting your shots. So there was a lot of trial and error involved, some good shots, some bad, and some so bad I barely made contact with the ball. There was no way to know what I did to produce the good or the bad shots, but eventually, after quite literally a million swings, I figured out how to make the ball go very straight. And that took me all the way to the LPGA Tour where I competed with the best players in the world. Fast forward 30 years, I found myself embarking on a slightly different, updated learning experience. In 2020, I decided to learn how to play the piano. See, I caught a bit of a live performance bug while in business school where I sang in a student band called The Lurking Variables. <laughs> and we performed in the Battle of the Bands competition in 2014 and 2015. And since then, I've always wanted to explore this musical performance side of me further. So finally, in January of 2020, I made a New Year's resolution to do an open mic at a local bar here in SF. Now, I don't know if you've ever looked up the requirements for an open mic performer, but you can't just get up there and karaoke. That's just called karaoke and you should probably go find a different kind of bar. <laughs> but you have to be able to play your own instrument and sing at the same time. This presented a challenge for me. The only instrument I knew how to play was the flute. And the one time I attempted to learn the guitar, I ended up with tendinitis in my left hand before I got through my first song. So piano it was. In learning the piano, I didn't have a coach like I did in golf, but I had YouTube, where I found hundreds of coaches who created every type of tutorial content imaginable. I spent many quarantine-induced hours watching YouTube tutorials for my favorite songs and tried to follow along. My poor husband, <laughs> he had to endure my genuinely awful playing, endlessly practicing the same passages over and over again in our tiny San Francisco apartment. Yes, this was during lockdown, right, COVID. And YouTube is an unbelievable resource for those of us trying to learn anything. There are hundreds of millions of hours of how-to content out there, but it does have its limitations because it's one thing to watch someone doing something or them telling you to do something and a whole another thing to ex execute that thing on your own. To learn a single 10 second passage, I would have to remember the minute mark of the video so I can go back and watch that specific part of the video at least 20 times before I could attempt to follow along. And when I did, it would sound nothing like what I had just watched. I knew I was making mistakes, but didn't know how to fix them. 
It was a frustrating process not having someone there to provide feedback on what I was doing along the way. Well, the whole open mic at a bar thing never happened thanks to the pandemic, but I did manage to learn over a dozen songs that year that I could play while singing. So I posted them on YouTube as an alternative to my New Year's resolution for all my extremely loyal 49 subscribers. As you can tell, I'm a bit of a diehard for skill acquisition. And my lifelong pursuit of learning really complex skills led me to start my company, Sportsbox AI. Sportsbox has developed an AI-enabled 3D motion tracking and analysis technology that can fill the very gap that I just described between watching a tutorial or receiving instruction and performing a skill. And I believe technologies like Sportsbox will completely transform the way we learn anything. AI technology has come a long way since its first commercial application in the voice recognition space. A few years ago, we began seeing technology that can automate the tracking of key points of a human body while in motion. What you're seeing here is a machine learned model that through millions of frames of photo and video data can accurately pinpoint to the joint centers of key body parts like shoulders and hips, knees and elbows. This, as many of you guys know, is called 2D pose estimation. With Sportsbox, we've taken it a few steps further. We've trained our AI models to accurately identify over 40 key points on the body and equipment with an incredible degree of accuracy from just a single video. Even in a fast moving motion like a golf swing, and even when the body parts are hidden from camera view. Further, our AI can now turn these 2D key points of the body, X and Y coordinates, and figure out the 3D position of those key points, X, Y, and Z, which are then turned into an avatar that can be seen from all different angles like this. And again, all of this is generated from a single video taken on a mobile phone. What does that actually do for us? Well, it allows us to start measuring the motion in a way that's never been possible without a multi-camera system that requires markers and sensors all over the body. And measuring is a key foundational step to improvement in anything in life, whether it's business, fitness, or sports. In golf, just a few degree difference in your body angles can mean the difference between a well-struck shot at the intended target and a complete whiff. But training your body to move to the correct degrees and inches and in the correct sequence is incredibly difficult when the athlete cannot see themselves while in motion. With Sportsbox's 3D motion data, when I'm working on a key swing change that will improve, say, my backswing rotation, I can now know if I'm rotating enough or too much relative to an ideal position with every swing in practice. I can also compare the data between my swing when I hit that amazing shot straight at the target and when I hit it far out of bounds into my neighbor's window and quantify the differences immediately. Sportsbox's AI technology can provide the critical feedback in the moment so you can make a course correction. There's no time wasted on obliviously repeating mistakes and wondering what you're doing differently from the lesson you just got. Beyond the obvious coaching and training application of the ability to measure the motion, Sportsbox is tackling the game improvement and performance optimization in a few other ways. First, an equipment fitting. This year, we developed the world's first AI fitting tool in our app that can assess your swing and recommend a club that would best fit your unique swing. We've used motion data combined with outcome data, where did the ball go with each swing, to create an AI model that predicts what weight, flex, and kick point of the golf club shaft will produce the best outcomes for the different types of golf swings. I personally experienced the power of AI recommended club fitting and the results defied all expectations of my own 35 years of golf experience and those of very experienced expert fitters who would have recommended something very different for me. Second, in broadcast. 
some new technology to take a look at uh, these guys' swings this week. It's called Sportsbox 3D Golf. Then you go to the top and we'll look at his chest turn. That's a 100% chest turn to the top of his backswing. That's on the high end. Uh, the, the PGA Tour average is 92 degrees. Understanding what makes an elite professional hit an amazing shot on some holes and not so amazing shots on another can become much clearer and data-driven when you start measuring the motion. And measuring athletes' motion during competition when they're under pressure and in varying weather circumstances and course layouts. And seeing how those elements affect their movement patterns can lead to incredible insights about individual athletes' tendencies. AI can then predict how a certain player will react to a situation before they hit that shot and help them prepare accordingly. There's so much exciting work being done in this space and what we're seeing is AI ML technology that's democratizing access to learning skills in the same way the internet democratized access to information and knowledge decades ago. My entrepreneurial pursuit may have started as a somewhat self-serving endeavor, but what really drives me is the idea that I can be part of this democratization movement to help everyone achieve their potential faster and more efficiently. Whether that's learning a new sport or language or just a new dance. And we should all be excited about this. What is our collective potential in a world in which everything we want to learn, we can learn 10 times faster? Could I perhaps learn every choreographed dance to Justin Timberlake's 2006 album and Moon Knight as his backup dancer? What's on your list of skills you want to learn? While AI technology is amazing and will only get more and more mind-blowing, it can't yet teach us how to build a startup, guide us through the daily challenges of building a team, raising money, building a product, and how to do it all in a hyper-competitive, male-dominated industry as a female founder. I know I'm still early in my journey as an entrepreneur, but I wanted to offer a few learnings from my own personal experience. First, be unique in your field with skill stacking. Build expertise in one thing. You don't have to be the world's best at it, but become a top 1% expert. And then bring it to another field where that expertise is rare. I may not have been the best golfer in the world, but my pursuit of that dream got me to a place where I became a top 1% expert in all things golf. So when I entered the business world, I had a distinct advantage in building a startup in the field of golf. So build your own expertise by pursuing something you're passionate about. Work really hard to become an expert and then switch. Do it a few times until you're one of very few people in the world who possess the combination of skills and expertises you've stacked. That will make you a truly unique talent that's hard not to back. Second, show up. Being an entrepreneur is perhaps the closest thing to being a professional athlete. The extreme highs and lows and the all-in mentality slash eternal optimism that's required to keep moving forward. And the fact that you have little to no control over the outcome. You put in 10, you don't get 10x back. Nothing is linear to your efforts. And that can be discouraging and sometimes downright devastating. Trust me, I spent many nights crying on the bathroom floor of random hotel rooms in strange cities after bad days on the golf course. But while you can't control the outcome, you can focus on the quality of your efforts and intention day to day. And you can choose to show up, even when it feels really hard, or even when you know the day isn't going to be filled with just the fun stuff. And showing up is the only way you will be able to knock on the doors behind which may be your next big unlock. And eventually you'll find that what you've built is far beyond what you had thought possible for yourself. And finally, use the nose to fuel you. I jokingly tell people that I was the worst golfer to ever play professional golf. And really, I had no track record of success as a golfer when I graduated from college. I barely played junior golf competitions, and at Yale, I actually quit golf so I could go study abroad in China. So when I turned pro, 
there were a lot of people questioning my sanity, including my own parents. My mom called me delusional at one point. So when I was 25 and still struggling to get to the LPGA tour, I had a chance to play with a wealthy gentleman who was known to back aspiring professional golfers. And he could have been my next sponsor, so I was really excited to play with him. After a round, he turned to me and said, you're probably better off focusing on finding a husband and getting married. Golf isn't for you. I went home and cried for two days straight. And then I got up and decided to move to a different city so I'd never have to see that guy again and worked harder than ever, thinking about his face every time I hit a ball. In 12 months, I played my way to the final stage of the LPGA Tour qualifying school and got my full status by finishing 12th in a field that included stars like Michelle Wee and Stacey Lewis, who would eventually become world number one and a slew of extremely talented players with junior and college careers full of wins. You will hear a lot of no's. Some of them will be brutal rejections. They will hurt, and that's okay. It's all part of the process. But turn around and use that to fuel you, to prove them wrong. No, make them wrong with what you do next. Believe so hard in yourself, that you make their opinions invalid and change their reality. Thank you.